Patrick Harim from NorthstarBadCharts.com joins us today to chat charts on gold and silver. This and more on this week's episode of Metal Money. I'm your host, Patrick Vieira. Patrick Harim, welcome back to Metal Money. How are you doing? Hi, Patrick. It's a, it's a pleasure to be back with you. Thanks for having me. Hey, Patrick. Glad to, glad to have you back again. You've been pretty active on Twitter. I've been looking at a bunch of your tweets lately. And um, in fact, you recently tweeted uh, where what you refer to as your most bullish chart for silver yet. I must admit, I didn't quite understand the significance of the chart with all the X's and O's, zeros and crosses. Could you explain it for us, starting with the silver chart? Sure. Can I, I'll, I'll you want me to share my screen? Sure, sure. Okay. All right. So th this is, a, guys, it's a point and figure chart. So for guys who don't know too much about TA, point and figure essentially is you'll only add a new series of O's. So the O's, the price action goes down. The X's, the price action goes up. Only you'll add, if ever you get three X's or three O's in the opposite direction. And each O or X right now is set at 80 cents. So you here, look, this is the entire like uh, the 1900s all the way to the 1980 top, it just ranged within that all the time. It never had a pullback uh, more than 80 cents times three on the way back down. So it just kept going up. So time moves on, but the, you're not adding new columns. You could see here at the bottom, 1974, here 1981, and the, the whole time scale is messed up. So you only see pure price action. So when the price action moves enough in a certain direction or the opposite direction, then we get a new important uh, 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 column that adds it on. So if you look at this here, what this creates essentially is pure price action based resistance or breakout line from those 2011 tops. And here are the echo bubble. And after that, all the way to today, one touch, two, three, four, five touches. This trend line is super, super, super powerful. So as soon as we get a close, so we get a series of X's uh, and we close above, and now I think it's probably 28, and a little, let's say 2880 right above here, and we create a new X right above here, it's go time. This is a, a uber long-term breakout line, no resistance above, and then we should vacuum up just like these, these every time we've had these moves above important uh, horizontal resistance line, we just vacuumed up. And the target, the natural target is gonna be $48. Uh, and if I could just add at the bottom, just to show even more visualization, this is a 10 period moving average, Patrick. It's like, um, it's uh, the red line. And every time this is where we went above it, we've had a meaningful bull run. So we were never able here to go above that 10 period moving average, we went up above, and then we had our beautiful, beautiful, uh, meaningful uh, uptrend. And the same thing will happen in, the, in the 2020. We went above the 10 period moving average. And now the only thing that I see happening is we're actually testing a channel so one touch, two touch, we're testing the channel in that zero line. So the odds are for me that we resolve upwards and we go much, much higher and we go test distance ourselves from that uh, 10 period moving average. So un until that arc breaks, until we close below that 10 period moving average, this has to be considered one of the most bullish charts for silver out there. Yeah, yeah, that looked uh, pretty similar to roughly that, uh, I guess, 2008 level, 2010 around there. Looks so pretty similar. Well, yeah, the equivalent for me is like like 2004 or five there when we exploded. So we crossed above that 10 period moving average. And after that, even if we had strong pullbacks like silver usually does, here's a 2008 crash. Even if we had a strong pullback, which dipped uh, below that 10 period moving average for a little while. If you take a step back and you held on 2005 to 2011, you were able to ride that trend, which went parabolic. Okay, thanks for that, Patrick. How about the gold chart? All right. So the gold chart, I did the same thing uh, as, as silver. So it's the point figure chart. Each box is $40. So every time it has a, on a two-day close basis, so if as soon as it has a two-day close basis close, $40 higher, then it adds X. And look at gold, man. This Breakout line here, this is the 2008, coming out of the 2008 crash, 2009, this beautiful uh, explosion, consolidation towards that 10 period moving average. Right here in the 2013 top, it failed, so it exploded. It came close to that 10 period moving average. 
but then it fell. So that was the end of the bull market. But right now we had an explosion. And the only thing we've had, no matter how much time it, it took from gold, from those all-time highs that we did uh, last year to today, the point figure condenses all that time. And now we have a much similar pattern that we had coming out of the 2008 uh, crash. Pull, flag, getting squeezed up with that 10 period moving average. So e either this, Patrick, it's a fail where eventually we start closing below that 10 period moving average, or if this is just a setup like we've had uh, even here, like this is the huge, huge uh, explosion in the 19, from 1933 to all the way to 1980 top. And then this is the whole 1980s, the whole 1990s period, all condensed in just those six, seven uh, uh, columns. And then gold exploded in 2003. Same thing here, 2009 explosion or 2000 um, post 2000, yeah, 2009 explosion. And now same, same type of setup. If I look at the bottom, here's the distance from the 10 period moving average just to show what's been happening. This is like a beautiful arc. So the momentum has been dry since 2011 top. We've been getting closer and closer to that 10 period moving average. We're dipping below, but look at these touches. One, two, three, four. The geometry of that arc was followed to perfection until uh, just recently where we started going away and now we're starting to form another arc which could probably hold the price action as we're getting squeezed up with that 10 period moving average man and here it's starting also to create a potential breakout line so you need three touches for at least a line to come into existence so here we had the first touch second soon we're going to probably test that that third line we're going to see how it reacts if it morphs into existence but it's getting really, really close, just like silver. So as soon as we get a close here, so this is probably going to be 1880 or 1920. Man, uh, I don't see why you would be bearish gold until you at least close below that 10 period moving average on that PNF chart. Because this is the type of behavior it does explode, consolidates, explodes, consolidates. And we've just had our first explosion. So... Um, that's how I see gold. Once you re re remove the noise and the time is because the time, that's what wears you out. Right. I had uh, other guys on Twitter were talking and time is the hardest thing for investors or people holding on the stock. They think it's the end of the world, but point and figure removes that time. It's, it's hard to look at this chart and say, I don't understand gold. It's been, well, it's been consolidating for, for a year and the chart doesn't look worse than that. Well, it's because, the time has uh, has your brain, you know, starting to doubt yourself, starting to not think everything's breaking down. But at the end of the day, the chart hasn't looked as bullish uh, in a while there. Some good stuff. Patrick, if you don't mind, though, why 80 cents and $40? Okay, well, those are based on the ATR. So there's a setting for in the trading view for the point and figure. So the average true range of the last 14 period so it's going to detect uh, the, the price range for that last 14 period. So for silver, it detected that the price movement for silver for the last 14 days was uh, 80 cents. Um, yeah, 80 cents. So now that's how it's building the, the new excess is always. It's based on that recent uh, type of price movement. That's why the, the price movement, when it was worth uh, 10 cents, 20 cents, 30 cents, it was in one straight column because it didn't fall. and It was less than 80 cents to, to start uh, creating a reversal. And for gold, the same thing. So it's using the average true range of the last 14 periods. So for gold, it, it, the average true range is $40. So that's the block size. Somebody could manually have said, I want a block size of $10 or $80. And that would change how the chart will look, right? Because if you put a block size of $10, you're going to see more, more volatility, more uh, ups and downs, because every time there'd be a $10 times three, a reversal, then you'd have a new column and then it start looking more like a regular chart like we're used to and it would condense less the time. So the bigger the block size, the more time is condensed. Yeah, so that was the 80 cents for silver and $40 for gold, right? Yeah. Hey, Patrick, along the lines of the most bullish charts you've released this month, why were you so excited with the tin versus silver ratio charts? Okay. All right. I'll show you this one. This, this is so funny because I never thought about this, uh, this tin chart. I'll, I'll, I'll show you guys first the, the silver to tin chart. And it's somebody on, on YouTube that did a comment on a podcast I did. It said, I don't get it. People are looking at all these silver ratios, but you're not looking at tin. Tin's used with silver. They're practically used all the time. But, you know, like, I don't know too much about fundamentals and narratives. So I just said, okay, let's look at tin. This, Patrick, is the tin chart. And holy Moses, like, 
I could overlay silver. It, it looks practically like the silver chart. They peak at like pretty much either before or after. But look, this is like in my dreams, Patrick, this is how I dream the silver chart to go, right? Wow. <laughs> like a rocket ship. I said, so when I saw that, I said, man, and they're used together, tins used with silver applications all the time. So I said, this is a highly correlated type of metals. And man, if I saw a tin do that, you know, my brain's already working well. Could this be in silver's future? It's practically the same type of pattern. So when you have two charts that look the same, then when you do a racial chart of them, it could give you a clue. So if they're highly correlated and you could put them on a racial chart to see points where one versus the other one's overvalued or less valued, then you could kind of guess when you're about to turn around. So, okay, once stretched that much away from the other one, it's time for the other one to catch up, right? And then it, it goes in the opposite direction. So here at the bottom is a silver chart on the monthly candle, uh, monthly line chart with the one-year moving average. And here is the ratio of tin versus silver. So every time that upper boundary was hit, it was tin was so much overvalued versus silver that these were points where silver actually started bottoming and started um, outpacing tin. So in the bear market, your silver, that means it's going to start outpacing it. Tin, even if it's on the way down, and in a bull market, that means tin silver is going to outperform tin, but with price increases. And look at that when I hit these spots here, draw trend line one, two, or it overshot here one, two, three, four, five, six. So, this is a very, very meaningful type of uh, above this line, something important, below this line, something important. And silver here in the 2019 lows, it's 2019 lows. Tin was outperforming silver badly. So now silver catches up. And now as we saw, tin has been outperforming silver so much. So this is a probable, if this turns back down, that means silver is going to outperform tin. And I'm expecting since we're above an inclining one-year moving average, we're going to outperforming it on the way up. Just like we did in 2004. You saw my PNF charts right before where I think we might be close to 2004 or five type of a price construct. Well, same thing here. We could be exactly around this area here. As silver starts outperforming tin, then this could be like a, a, a bull mode, like another injection on in silver price appreciation coming over the next, uh, this one was uh, like a, over a year there as like a three-year bull run. So let, let's see how much gas this gives. So man, for me, this is was a super, super bullish there just because of this relationship and Maybe for some of your fundamental viewers, they could comment and see how that makes sense or doesn't make sense. But from a pure chart trading uh, aspect, these two assets are highly correlated just in price action. And the ratio is telling me that silver is done underperforming tin okay. if uh, this ratio starts turning back down. Okay. You know, it's, I tell you what, it's definitely great to be bullish for silver. I personally am as well. But the price of the white metal, has slipped under $25 recently, kind of struggling in that $25 range. What's the potential downside scenario for silver that you may be preparing for? Uh, $48. <laughs> <laughs> 40. uh, because now the pattern's holding up. So if it starts breaking down, then there's some like bearish channels. So if we can't make a new high, and if the price of silver goes 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 too down, especially that PNF chart, the first one I showed, if somebody, if we get down below that uh, ten period moving average, and we start creating new lows, then what you have to do is your mindset. You have to look at all right. So am I creating a bearish channel? And a bearish channel usually the target, the first target is the bottom rail. And I've done previously some of these charts, and the bottom rail it brings silver like maybe to eight dollars. But uh, that's just one part of the weight of evidence, right? It's like. Whenever like somebody gives a target like five hundred dollars silver or eight dollar silver, that's there's it's a roadmap. So there's a lot of technicals have to be overridden. Bullish technicals have to be overridden on multiple time frames to start getting closer to those uh, lower, lower hand targets. But uh, honestly, right now, if I would focus on that first uh, the chart I showed for silver until we you get a, a couple of zeros below that arc, below that uh, ten period moving average. It's, it's uh, all noise, and you have to look for upwards uh, resolution. Patrick Karim from NorthstarBadCharts.com. I appreciate the time you've given, and I hope we can do this again real soon.
It was my, my honor, Patrick. Thank you very much. There you go. That was Patrick Kareem from NorthstarBadCharts.com, charting the course for gold and silver. As always, leave your thoughts in the comment section below and remember to keep it liquid, keep it real. And I'll see you on the next episode of Metal Money.